It's with a great pleasure that I introduce the next speaker. That happens to be me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about the AI revolution that Henning was actually hinting to earlier. Um, I'm very sorry. I wrote the slides in Icelandic. I was going to give this talk in Icelandic, but uh, every, all the other talks are in English, and there are non Icelandic speak people here in the audience, so I will actually give the, the talk in Icelandic, but please bear with me uh, uh, that the slides are in Icelandic. So, what is the AI revolution? Uh, I'm sure we have all heard about in the news uh, all kind of news about that the AI, artificial intelligence, is taking all our jobs or will in the future. Uh, even thinking what will will be humans have any work in the future and some of the predictions are saying that this will happen sooner rather than later and AI is only about as a, as a discipline only about 60 years old and it was actually founded with the goal in mind to try to get computer to solve more and more problems especially where we humans are good at and now the AI is becoming so successful at doing what it was set out to do that there is a question about uh, what will happen to us, the humans, in the future. Um, and again, there's endless news about this and, and various different predictions. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a background into this. Um, and many people are, are um, predicting that this will have a huge effect on the way we work and live in the future, even calling this the fourth industrial revolution, kind of to reflect uh, uh, kind of the drastic changes that have always followed these industrial revolutions. So, and this is not only in AI, of course, like automation because of the AI is, is a part of it, but there's also other technological advances in um, Internet of Things, for example, life sciences and so on, that's all going to have a fact. And a part of this is that unlike, you could say, the previous revolutions that are mostly to do with manufacturing jobs, we're also talking about knowledge jobs. Henning talked about teachers uh, and other specialists, doctors, lawyers, others, everything is under. So if the job is what you're doing is somewhat repet repetitive, it is at least a prime candidate for uh, being replaced by uh, a virtual agent. Uh, and moreover, this change is going to have not only a huge economical consequences, but also a general just uh, on the society how we live. And we have people like Obama uh, and others, uh, Elon Musk, they're talking about that we have to pay our citizen just for existing. Uh, and then, because there will not be enough job for everyone, and that's the question, will there be, well, of course we are going to lose some jobs, but will there be enough of new jobs uh, so we can all work? And the question is, how extensive are the, those changes going to be? Here's a quote. Machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work man can do. We heard people like Elon Musk talk about things like this. This quote is actually by a, a, a pioneer in artificial intelligence. He used to be a professor at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. He's also a recipient of uh, Alan Turing Award, which is the highest honor you can get in computer science, kind of equivalent to the Nobel Prize. But he also happened to be a Nobel Prize winner. He actually won the Nobel Prize in economics for decision theory. Um, what I'm not telling you until now is that this quote by Herbert Simon was done in 1956. This is the early days of AI. So the question is, is this a hype or reality? Of course, it's difficult to say, but I will kind of give you an overview for what some specialists have been saying. So is this hype or hope? No. So, Forrester is a, a research company and a, a consulting company. They are actually saying that in the next five years, like international, uh, highly respected company, they are actually saying in the next five years, 
6% of jobs will be automated, mainly in transportation and services. Uh, there was uh, in 2013 a report from University of Oxford where they are estimating the risk of, of job being automated and they're saying over one third of the jobs in the UK and almost half of the jobs in the US in the next 20 years. Uh, McKinsey had a similar forecast for the US using a similar methodology. And the World Bank just last year uh, uh, released a report where they're saying like over half the jobs of OECD at the risk of being automated in the next 20 years. So we are talking about if this comes true, it's going to be a huge change in the way that we just live. So the question is, of course, like the jobs disappear. We've seen this all before. This has happened in all these industrial revolutions that was mentioned. And the question is, will there be enough jobs for everyone to uh, so will there be enough new jobs created to offset the jobs that are being lost? That's kind of the big debate now. Uh, I think everyone agrees, uh, no matter what, that there's going to be a lot of disruption. A lot of people will lose their jobs, and at least temporary, there will be a, a, a huge consequences of that, and, and we cannot create the jobs fast enough for everyone to, to, to get to, to work, basically. Uh, but the question is, uh, in the long run, Will there be enough new jobs? And there's not much research on that, research on that, but there's a very recent research. It's actually three days old. <laughs> they published this three days. These are two very, very famous economists, one at MIT and other at Boston University, where they were actually looking at the impact of the industrial robots in the US over the last 15 years. And they found out basically based on that, that they were not, uh, they were not and not, like the, the, the more jobs lost because of this automation that we created, and also it led to lower salaries. So if that is something uh, that uh, is predicted that what will happen in the future, it's definitely something we have to look at, and this is mainly political uh, issue. So how are we going to deal with this? And so the government had to do that, and also we, like the university and all educational uh, institutions, how do we educate our people for this uncertain world? Thank you. <laughs>